Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I am Kimmy I'm Nicole and my channel is all about life, life experiences, things we've been through. I'll have beauty tips on here. I have health tips on here. I'll have currently I'm in a season of child custody and what it what it is and what it means to be separated and going through family um, changes. We'll just put it that way to keep it short. So if you have not done so yet and you're new to my channel, please hit the like button, subscribe button and the bell to make sure that you are getting all of my uploads as they come through. I am doing my best to post daily blog or daily um, daily videos because of the topic I'm getting I'm on right now. And I just want to get that information out because some people are struggling in situations now where they're having to deal with some court situations, separation situations and need to know what to do with their child with their children or with their child and how all of that impacts. Um, so if you have not done so, definitely go back and review some of my um, information. I put it up front. I, disclaimer, I am not of, of any legal aid of whatsoever. All of my um, advice and talk comes from life experiences and things that I've been through, things that I've learned on my own over the last 10 years. So uh, be sure to always check with your state's requirements versus when it comes to child support and child custody issues and what things are i'm only speaking from experience so i can't give you legal advice but what i what i am here to do is just kind of give you some type of advice where to get started and what it all means because a lot of times when you're having to deal with custody and all of these all of these different things you're not used to it can be very overwhelming so my biggest question today um we'll go ahead and get started is should your child see both parents Seems like an obvious question, but it is not always the obvious, okay? So one of the things that keeps it from being just so obvious of, oh yeah, of course, you should see the, the, the child should see the, both parents, right? That's on the outside looking in until you actually get into the situation and you and your significant other have now split. There are a lot of emotions that come with it. A lot of tears that come with it, a lot of anger, a lot of sadness, a lot of hurt, depending on what that person did. <clears throat> there are a thousand different scenarios out there. You two could be together, and if it's male and female, he could cheat, she could cheat, and choose a different family to be with at this point, and now it's saying, I don't want to be with you anymore. A lot of times, if we're female, I'm going to speak from a female perspective, because that's who I am. We'll go, okay, well, if you don't want to be with me, you can't be with the child either. You, If you're leaving, you're off, You're leaving the whole thing. You know, it's either me in the package or none at all, whether that's their biological child or not. One, that's wrong, period. It's, if he's the father, he should see his child, regardless if he cheated or doesn't want to be with you or anything like that. One of the things that I want to motivate women to do today in today's time is to really really think about the significance of a father being in your child's life think about the significance of your father being in your life whether he was there or not and think about the damage being done when you refuse your child to see their father so a lot of times females grow up with the term daddy issues and we have the daddy issues because our fathers were not there or they're there but not emotionally there any any type of anything could happen abuse or just negligence anything like that but one thing that i can say across the board every single person in the whole world craves their father and if they say they're not they're lying everybody wants the father everybody so in the situation where you are separating from your child's biological father we need to think about what does my child really want in their life? If I was a little girl, would I want to be with my father? That's the question. If your answer is yes, if you were a little girl any time in your life and you really wanted to be with your father, then nine times out of 10, I'm sure probably 10 times out of 10, so does your child. Your child wants to still know their father. The relationship issues are very separate and should be kept separate from the child and the parent relationship. Um, if it is a male, same thing. 
Males, you should not want to take the child away because you don't want no other man around your child. That is, that's just unnecessary and uncalled for, okay? So if the child is in the middle of this whole thing, you don't want to, you don't want to be with a mom, but you don't want another man to be in the household. You need to get it together and stay with the mom. And y'all need to go to counseling and get it together or something so that you don't have that issue. Because the child is the one that's being hurt if you want to pull the child now from the mom, especially if she's a good mom. So, and, and, and I'm speaking from a normal basis. Every Both parents are fit. Both parents can take care of the child. There's, you know, neither parent is on drugs. So let me define a fit parent versus an unfit parent because whether the parent is fit or unfit does matter when the question comes, should the child see both parents? The answer is yes, the child should see both parents if both parents are fit. And a fit parent is typically described as one who is financially, physically, and mentally stable to take on the responsibilities of raising a child. Is there a stable home? Is there in that home that doesn't mean they have to have their own place that they're living with parent, you know, uh, most single women tend to have to stay with their mothers for that support. So if if one parent or the other is staying with family members as a roommate, you want to make sure that every anyone that they're staying with is somebody that is safe and properly fit for the child, not ever going to abuse the child, talk down to the child, talk bad about the situation in any way. So the parent has to be fit, number one, in those ways, financially, mentally, and physically. You don't want to send your child over there and they won't be able to eat, okay? But if the parent is working, has some type of living uh house situation um is able to get the child back and forth to school if school is involved <coughs> anything like that excuse me then the the parent is fit um if, there's, if it's just a, a healthy loving environment that's the main importance of whether the child should go or not anything that is unfit a parent who is unfit you're talking about a parent who may be on drug or alcohol abuse. Um, a parent who may not have a home. You know, if they're in hotels or from house to house to house, uh, you know, they're homeless. You know, they, you don't, it's not fit at that time for the child to see them overnight per se. Maybe that parent could come over to your home and see the child. Maybe you could go to a restaurant, maybe to an extracurricular event basketball, baseball, whatever the child may be in, swimming, anything like that. So don't refuse the parent to see the child if they just can't get it together financially. They're going through a hard time if this is something new or something like that. Let them get on their feet some, maybe not do any overnight, but allow the child to just see the other parent. So it's really important to maintain a healthy relationship between whichever parent. But if the parent is on fit on drugs, alcohol abuse, financial things are not together. And I'm I'm not talking what you feel like because the the father or mother of the child may be working at um, a minimum wage job and that's still okay. That does not mean that they can't see the child because they're not making all this money living in this big house and and all of this stuff. If they have proper living space, they're able to provide a healthy, loving environment, whether it meets your standard or not, that, that parent is fit. If they're not sexually, physically, mentally, verbally abusing the child, then they are fit. So that's one thing you want to um, keep in mind when you're having to face that question, should your child see the other parent? It really has nothing to do with you in the relationship with the other parent because it's, that's really grown folk business. It's not the child's business. So try your hardest to keep it separated. So again, unless the parent is unfit, it, it is fair that the, the child does get to see both parents. And I'm just looking at a few notes to make sure I cover everything. Um, so... There's just, just a few things that I want to cover before, just a few more points to just kind of go over and review. One, 
that it is important for the child to see both parents. From experience, I've seen this perspective in my eyes, a father's eyes, and I've also seen it through the child's eyes. And children have a way to, they have an innocence about them where they are able to forgive, where they're able to kind of see both ends, where they want peace and they want balance, they want stability. And the greatest gift that you could give your child is that peace between both of you all, because the children equally love mom and dad the same. They're oblivious to the things that we do in the relationship that could hurt the other person. The children just see the love that they have for their parent and how they want their family structure to be. Though the family can't be all together in one household, it is very, very possible to have peace among each other as long as you're both putting the child first, not what you want, not what I want. Because if I can have what I want personally, you know, that's peace in my mind. And the father could be saying the same thing. But at the end of the day, is what does a child want? And the children always, always want both parents unless that parent has been abusive in some type of way toward them. So, and again, I only speak from non-abusive situations because my experience didn't have any abuse in it. So I can't speak on those things. I'm not knowledgeable in those areas. So I'm not saying, you know, please be wise with your decisions. If, if it is a hostile situation, you know, let it cool down some. There's a, other videos where I talked about mediators. Get a mediator involved to help you figure out a custody uh, visitation plan so that the child can go see their the other parent if you all can't get it together by yourselves. The children have never even asked to be here. The two parents, you two parents created the child. So let's make it as peaceful as possible because they didn't ask to be here on this earth. They didn't ask to be born into a broken family. Um, you know, they want love and they want care and they want to be hurt out. So let's, let's just make that possible for them. The fighting and arguing and refusing to allow the child to see the other parent causes deep, deep wounds and scars within the children. And it is very important that we as the adults try our best to protect our children in that way to stop a lot of these generational curses where our families back then would separate from each other and we don't know who daddy is. We're not, we're not going to see daddy because daddy decided to leave and go to another family or, you know, we don't know how to blend these two families together because mom or dad is over there. Their mom left and now mom has a new husband and new, new kids and, you know, those situations weren't always handled the best way. So you have a lot of adults now who have grown up and they're empty on the inside. They're filling voids with drugs and alcohol because they don't have anybody to talk to. If they do open up, it's painful. You know, we have all these issues, but we also have the control to stop it in our next generation of kids growing up. Our children, we can stop that pain by learning to cope with an end of a relationship, whether we wanted it to end or not. And then teach them a better way of doing things by showing cordial behavior, accepting each parent for who they are, accepting the circumstances of how the things ended, and allowing the child to peacefully have a relationship with mom and dad. So that is the goal. That is what I hope to leave with you today as a thought. If you like this video, please like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have more on this topic. Um, please stay tuned because I have so much more to say about this topic. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it down below so I can answer them. Um, if there is something you want me to talk about, do a video on, I'll certainly do so. Just leave it down in the comment box. Thank you again. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video.